Okay, so um, to study the gene expression levels using RNA-seq, I use this publication from 2022 in BMC Genomics. The title is Using Single Worm RNA Sequencing to Study CR Against Responses to Pathogen Infection. Okay, so in this introduction, it informs us about the benefits of using CL against as a model organism, blah blah blah. And uh, here, somewhere, it 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 uh, it writes that what they have done is that uh, they have take they have managed in this article to take RNA seq just from a single worm to study to study the expression levels of this worm. And this is beneficial compared to the um, other approach that somebody would take several um, animals, several worms, extract the RNA from all of them and treat this um, uh, RNA as a single sample. So generally there are um, two classes of approaches when we study, uh, when we do genomics in this case RNA-seq. Now the first is try to get to get RNA from a single source. So this might be single cell or here a single animal now notice that here actually it will be many cells but all the RNA will be from a single animal or try to get RNA from multiple sources and this for example will be from uh, cells of the same tissue or from many animals. Here it will be many worms, right? Many C. elegans. Now each approach has benefits and disadvantages. For example, from multiple sources, the benefit is that you get a lot of genetic material. So a benefit here is that you have uh, a lot of RNA. In contrast, in single source, so if you take only the RNA from uh, a single C. elegans, for example, it's a tiny worm, then you don't have, you have very few RNA, not enough, not enough RNA to do the sequencing. Now, the benefit of using single source is that you don't have variability. And what you get is a homogenized um, um, homogenized amount of RNA. With that I mean that if you... Okay, let, we will understand this if we will see that here in multiple sources. The, the disadvantage is that one animal so this worm here might have high expression level for a gene and another worm, even though they belong to the same class, so both of them are untreated, for example, it has a lower amount of uh, gene expression for, for the same gene. And another one has, again, high, relatively high expressions and so on and so forth. So if we put all of them together and we take RNA from all of them together, then eventually we will have something like an average expression value which will include however a lot of variability inside it and we will miss that, we will never see that because all the RNA from here all of this RNA is going within a single a flask so all this RNA is here so the RNA that we get 
is an amalgamation of the RNA from different animals. Now we don't have this problem when we do uh, we we extract RNA from a single source, uh, and then we are able to um, to do more precise uh, analysis of um, of uh, gene expression on, uh, of gene expression levels. Okay. All right. So in this article, what they managed to do is to um, to obtain enough RNA, or anyway, technically, they managed to to do sequencing from a single wall. a single C elegans. which is our worm here. All right. Um, so what we did is, uh, in, in this paper actually, what they, what they report is 10, 10 animals untreated, healthy, and 10 animals infected or treated by a pathogen called, let's see, what, what they write here, um, so by a pathogen called Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Okay, here you see what they did. From a single worm, uh, they get the RNA. So they enhance for uh, mRNA using this poly A. They do the cDNA, double stranded cDNA, library preparation, and then sequencing using Illumina HiSec 2500 and then data analysis, mapping, so this alignment is actually mapping, and differential expression analysis. So we will try to repeat these steps, but to speed up things, instead of using the whole data of uh, these 10 treated and 10 untreated individuals, I will just use, so this is what I did in the paper here, but I will just use three plus three. Three individuals treated and three untreated. And I, I made one more approximation, one more shortcut here. Instead of using the full, uh, the full um, uh, FASTQ file, so the reads, in, uh, the reads are in FASTQ files, but I don't use all of it. I just truncate it and I use just uh, 500,000 reads from each file. So the first 500,000 reads from each file. Typically their RNA um, data here have approximately 20 million reads. Each, each FASTQ file contains a, approximately 20 million reads. Because all this will take some time, I just truncate it. Okay, so the data are located in uh, the server here. So in this address. And you see that I have taken the SRR files from NCBI. Perhaps I can show that. So this is the publication. And if I want to find the data, SRR, um, I have to go to NCBI. And use the SRA database. And just type here SRR, okay, let's see what is the name. SRR 182. 
12 um, 401 for example okay this is um, the web page that describes just one sample here um, it writes that it contains 20.6 million spots, 20.6 million reads. I can go here and get it. So if I click here, fast queue, I can download it. So I have done this already for six files. Uh, and then I have used some commands in Linux and truncate this to just 500,000 reads. And they have uploaded the data in a server here. And the name is the same ID that I found in NCBI. And then I just put the word small here to know that it's a smaller data set. And then because it's per then you have one dot fast queue and two dot fast queue. So these two files um, refer to the same uh, C elegance animal. And this the same one, the same one, the same one, the same one, the same one. So six animals, three from each class. Okay, um, and then I have uh, created this. Um, uh, genomic GFF, I found this in NCBI. Let's see. If I go again to NCBI, and now found the genome, genome database, and write C. elegans. Then I can download from here go to datasets. Uh, okay, I can even use this command actually to download the whole information uh, about C elegance. But let's see if, if it is described here. Now I must go. Okay, I can choose this one and I can download the um, genome sequences. So the faster sequences for the reference C. elegans animal. I need a reference genome and so I can get it with this way. And also I can use the annotation features in GFF format. So I can click this one and download two files. I don't need actually this one. Um, so then these two files will be the FASTA sequence. This one GCF 00002985.6. And this is the FASTA sequence for the reference genome of worm. And also this file here, the genomic GFF, which contains annotations for all genes, exons, and so on, for them, uh, for the FASTA, for, for the genome of C. elegans. This file here, the list, it contains just the URL addresses of all the files here. If I just open it, it's just the URL addresses. I will need this later on when I will upload the data to Galaxy. Okay, so these are my data. I hope it's clear. And if I go to Galaxy, I register. I have uploaded already the data, but I will show how to do that. If I click here, upload data, I go to composite, oh, sorry, to collection, and then paste fetch data. And here it expects to give some addresses, some URL addresses. So I go here, I click on list, I get the, all the addresses that are relevant for me. Notice that I don't need actually this address here that refers to the list. Okay. I have pasted everything. I remove 
remove this because I don't need it. It's okay if I upload it, I just don't need it. So the first one is the reference genome and then it's the annotation file and below that there are 12 FASTQ files from six animals. And then I click start and it will start to upload it. Since I have done it already, I will uh, close it because I don't need to upload it several times. Close and I will delete these uploadings. It's just to demonstrate how to do that. Okay, so here they are. Now, since they are uploaded, um, I can proceed uh, with the next step, which will be uh, the quality control step. Okay, we'll show that in the next video.